your little one will go through at least four changes in their sleep environment in their first couple of years. And there'll be some other little changes in their sleep environment scattered amongst the big ones too. While this can seem quite daunting for us as parents, and it can be unsettling for your baby or your child, there are ways to make these changes and adjustments easier. Today, I'm going to be answering your sleep question. How can I help my child adjust to changes in their sleep environment? Hi, I'm Jane. I'm Little Ones Village team leader and I'm mother to Heather and to Carrick. Little Ones have helped over 200,000 families around the world with their baby sleep challenges and we're here to help you too. For more information on our app, please visit our website www.littleones.co. We have a wealth of knowledge and we would really like to share that with you, not only around baby sleep, but also around nutrition. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to our channel and if you hit the little bell button, you'll be informed whenever we publish any new videos. Okay, so let's get on with the question in hand. How can I help my child adjust to changes in their sleep environment? Well, let's talk about what those changes might be. So the four that I was talking about this at the start are the ones that we can't really avoid. So the first one, of course, is going from bump or belly to bassinet. Then we've got your baby moving from their bassinet to a cot and then from a cot to a bed. And in between that, you will most likely have a change from them sleeping in your room to moving into a room of their own. They're the four big ones. But the smaller ones might be your baby coming out of their swaddle and that will be a sleep association usually from birth until they start rolling and then we need to get rid of the swaddle. And the other sort of changes in your baby's sleep environment might just be going from sleeping in their cot in their room to sleeping in their stroller when you're out for a walk or going to visit gran or grandpa or another carer and staying with them. Even childcare can fall into that sort of bracket of a different sleep environment. So what are some of the things that we can do to make these changes in their sleep environment as easy as possible? Well, we want to make sure that your little one is ready for the change. So there's really no need to rush. But of course, some things will be taken out of your hands. We don't have a choice in your baby being born and then you're going to have to help them settle in their bassinet. And obviously when they start doing things like rolling, we have to take away a swaddle. But in the main, when we can, we want to make sure that they're ready for that change. Let's talk a bit about each different transition and what we can put in place to help. So when your baby is born, obviously they're used to having been inside a womb, which is really noisy, it's quite cramped and it's nice and cosy. So the best thing that we can do is try to recreate that womb feeling outside of the womb. And how we do that is we create a dark cave-like space for sleep. So the darker the room, the better. Crank up some white noise because inside the womb it's really noisy and babies actually find that noise and that constant whirring white noise really, really comforting and reassuring. And swaddle them. Until your baby's rolling, it's considered safe to swaddle them and this creates that nice tight feeling that they had when they were inside the womb as well. And it also stops their startle reflex. Startle reflexes usually kick in when your little one is going between light and deep sleep. So once they've been asleep for about 10-15 minutes, you might, if they're not swaddled, see their arms flying up above their head and then they can wake up and get quite upset. So if they're swaddled, we inhibit that startle reflex and that kicks in at the beginning of sleep cycles and towards the end. When your little one is showing signs of rolling, we need to remove the swaddle. To make that easier, what we can do is we can take it one step at a time. We can do one arm out of the swaddle for a little while before we move to two arms out of the swaddle or we could adopt a transitional swaddle like a sleepy hugs where they're still slightly inhibited but they are considered safe within that type of sleep sack. Another thing to do is concentrate on just perhaps a couple of sleeps in the day first. So perhaps the morning and the afternoon sleep for a couple of days before you move on to overnight sleep and lastly their big lunch nap. Usually we say leave the lunch nap to last because that's the most important restorative sleep of the day. And the same also can be said for this sort of slow, gradual process if they were moving from their bassinet into their cot. So you could give them a whirl at their cot for a couple of naps during the day before you move to overnight sleep and before you move to the lunch nap. Actually, I had my little one do all of her naps from birth in her big cot in her own room. So it meant that there wasn't really a huge adjustment 
when she moved into her own room for her overnight sleep. And there wasn't really a big adjustment when she had to come out of the basinate because usually they just get too big for the little basinates and they have to move into a bigger coat. So it seems relatively straightforward, doesn't it? And we can talk about it and make that sound perfectly easy. But of course, it's not always the case, as it? There can be a bit of upset because it's changed. What we're doing is when we move them from one sleep environment to another or we take away something that they're used to sleeping with, like their swaddle or their basinate, we're taking it away and we're changing a sleep association. So a bit like us, if we go to a hotel for an overnight stay, for example, you might find it a bit harder to fall asleep because you've not got your same pillow or you've not got your same duvet or the smell of the sheets is not the same. So these can unsettle us as adults and so we can expect the same of our babies and our children too. They might need a little bit of help and that's fine. If your baby's been really good at getting themselves off to sleep, they've got all their sleep cues in place, you might need to help them. So that might mean some hands-on soothing, taking them from drowsy to fully asleep and then just gradually reducing your input. The most important thing here is don't worry about it. Don't get yourself stressed and anxious. I know that you think we've got all this stuff down pat and now we're going to change it and we'll never recover it, but you will. Everything is always recoverable. Something that we always harp on about is awake times and when you're settling your little one to sleep and all the positive sleep associations. So to make each transition to another sleep environment as easy as possible, you want to have all their ducks in a row. And again, for more information on when your baby should be settling or what positive sleep associations they, ha they need to have or they should have, you can check that out on our app and in the blogs on our website and I'll link a few in the description below. So what are we talking about there? So helping them settle, totally understandable and then you can just reduce your input in that slightly. You'll probably find that the start of sleeps will be tricky for a couple of days but once they get used to that, it will get easier and easier. If you stay positive and you stay calm, your baby will respond to that. If you get anxious about it, they can really tune into how you're feeling and they can start displaying the same sort of feelings and behaviours that you are too. So stay positive, you've got it. Let's talk about another move, will we? Will we talk about moving from a cot to a bed? This is the big one, isn't it really? Because your child or your toddler usually by that point is used to being penned in and they can't get out and they can't come into your room and pull your duvet off and say come on I, I, I want in your bed or I want you to come through here and sometimes when they move from a cot to a bed we can expect that they will get out of it. A top tip here is really going back to what I said before make sure they're ready for this move there is no rush unless your toddler or your child is actually climbing out the cot and that's becoming dangerous Keep them in it as long as you can until you think really that they're ready. The older they are, the more the more that they will buy into the concept of this big new bed and the more that they will understand the whole process. You can help them buy into it as well when they're a bit older because their understanding is greater. So they could maybe choose the covers for the bed. They could choose the nightlight. Hopefully they'll be over two years old before they move at least into a bed. And a dim red nightlight for settling and sleep can really help at that point because their imagination's kicking into gear. When you make the move from a cot to a bed, stay calm. <laughs> if they get out of their bed and they're not upset, keep taking them back. Be quiet. Don't fuss about it. It's called a silent return. And by doing that, they just get bored. They realise that if I come out of bed, I just get put back. If I come out of bed, I just get put back. And they just stop getting out of bed. Not necessarily on the first night. You might have to return them 365,000 times, but it gets better day after day, night after night. The need to get out of bed or the thought or the urge to get out of bed will be much, much less. You can also tie in something like a reward chart with that. So rewards in the morning, stars and stickers for staying in their bed at bedtime and overnight. If your little one is upset at settling time, then it's absolutely fine to stay with them, reassure them. Again, it's a change. Not all children will respond in the same way. We can talk about it during the day. We can prepare them for change. That's a really good idea. But if they're still upset at the move, 
stay with them and just like you did before gradually reduce your input so you might go from sitting beside them to working your way out of the room we've got a lot more in-depth detail on helpful methods for helping your older children settle to within our app so that's really the big moves so bump to bassinet bassinet to cot cot to bed and then obviously you've got the swaddle transition that we spoke about there too what are some other little smaller transitions but equally they can be unsettling as well well let's think about when you go out and about in the pram the best thing to do there is try to recreate the environment in your bedroom in the pram that might be by doing something like investing in a snooze shade so you can cover the pram it won't be pitch black but it will be slightly darker than it would be without it and it'll also stop your child being able to look and see and be interested super helpful if you've got a baby with a fear of missing out and super 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 curious you can use portable white noise stick a white noise app on your phone um, and that will help drown out external noise but it, hopefully you'll be using that at home too so you're taking this association that you have at home with you when you're out and about too and keep on walking as your baby or your child moves between sleep cycles they rouse from a deep sleep into a light so if you see them rousing and waking up just keep on pushing the pram give it a little rock and hopefully that will see them through their sleep cycles the same sort of similar thing can be said for a move to childcare a top tip for settling in daycare, although you obviously won't need to cover the cot the way you might um, a pram when you're out and about, and the sleep environment will definitely be a bit brighter than it is at home. They get used to that too. So anyway, the top tip is take a slept on sheet or sleeping bag from home because the smell from home can be really comforting, reassuring and soothing for your little one. Um, and I have used that in the past myself and it has worked a treat. Take a comforter as well from home if you can. If you can buy two and keep one at home and leave one at daycare, then you know that it will always be there. So we've covered a few things today, some of the big moves and some of the smaller um, changes in your little one's sleep environment, which might be more day to day or week to week or month to month. I hope you found it really helpful. Um, again, we do have more information within the app and I have stuck some links um, in the description below for things that I think you might find quite helpful related to sleep environment and changes therein. Thank you so much for listening to me today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. To repeat what I said at the start, well, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so because we do stick out a lot of really useful videos um, just like this one. And you'll be informed of them if you click the bell, you'll be notified whenever we do publish a new one. So all that's left is for me to say goodbye, thank you for listening, and I'll catch up with you again soon.